All right, everybody, in this video, we're going to be calculating velocity, right? Trying to determine the speed at which water is moving through a pipe, given a certain size of a pipe and given some flow conditions. So in this example here, we're given a flow rate, right? Whether we're measuring it instantaneously or we're taking an average rate, we've got a flow rate of 158.5 GPM. Remember, what does GPM stand for? Gallons per minute, right? We've got a pipe here. It's a six-inch diameter pipe. And what we don't know is the velocity. So in this example, we can start with our formula for flow, Q equals AV, right? Or area times velocity, right? So Q, the quantity of water, equals area times velocity. In this example here, we're given Q. We can calculate the area. What we don't know is our velocity. Right? So it's a little bit different from how we sometimes traditionally use the QAV formula. So what do we need? Well, we need our flow in units that are helpful to us based on the area and based on the velocity. So let's start with the area component first. Area, remember the formula in water math is 0 0.785 times the diameter squared. So in this case, we're doing 0 0.785 times my diameter in six inches. Now remember, if you plug in the diameter in six inches, I'll write it out here. The answer you get here when you multiply this unit wise is going to be in square inches. Well, square inches isn't going to be helpful when we're looking at our flow and we're trying to find our velocity in feet per second. So remember, when you plug in the diameter here into the formula for area of a pipe, you always want to do it in terms of feet. Right, so what do we have? We have six inches. I know that there are 12 inches for every one foot. This gets me to cancel out the inches component. In other words, what am I doing? Six divided by 12, right? So we've got 0 0.5 feet. That's the diameter of our pipe. Okay, so we're gonna take this, plug that up here. 0 0.5 feet times 0 0.5 feet. Remember, because it's squared. So if we focus on the units now of my area, I've got feet times feet. I'm going to end up with square feet, and that's what I want. So pull out my handy-dandy calculator. I do 0 0.785 times 0 0.5 times 0 0.5. I get an area equal to 0 0.19625. So that's the full area I get in my calculator. Now remember, the more digits that you keep in your earlier calculations, the more accurate your answer is going to be at the end. Now, for the scope of these types of problems, you know, a couple digits is going to be fine. I like to keep at least three in these primitive calculations when we're looking at, at decimal places. So let's just say our area over here is equal to 0 0.196, and that's going to be square feet. Now, what I'm also given here is I'm also given a flow rate. But if we look at the flow rate units, 158.5 gallons per minute. If I were to just take that and plug it into my formula up here, if we go 158.5 gallons per minute, when I try to solve for my velocity here, you'll notice that when I try to divide out square feet over to this other side over here, None of my units are going to cancel out. It's going to be very funky looking. The numbers aren't going to make sense. So what I need to do is I need to convert my flow rate into CFS or cubic feet per second. So that way the feet cancel out. All right, I'll show you in just a second here. So now we got to do another conversion here. So my flow rate Q at 158.5 gallons per minute, we need to convert to CFS. Now, hopefully this is of one that we're all familiar with. But just as a reminder, we think about it in terms of units. If I'm trying to get rid of gallons, does gallons go up top or down below? It's going to go down below, right, on the opposite side. I'm trying to get to cubic feet. I'm trying to get rid of minutes. It needs to go on the opposite side over here. So this time I'm going to put it up top and seconds down below. I know there's one foot for every 7.48 gallons. I know there's also... One minute equals 60 seconds. For those of you using the shortcut, remember that this right here, when we look at just the bottom, that's our 448.8 shortcut. All right, this time we're going to divide because we're going from GPM to CFS. So I'm going to go 158.5 divided by 448.8 or divided by 7.48 divided by 60. However you want to do the math, you should get a flow rate equal to 0 
three, five, three, one, six, on and on and on cubic feet per second. That's what we want for this problem, right? Cubic feet per second. So coming back up to the top here, if I rewrite out my flow rate now in CFS, we'll do 0 0.353. That's what I'll carry for the sake of this problem. Cubic feet per second. Now I'm just going to use this top formula, right? I'm good with the flow. Don't need this here anymore. And now I'm going to solve for velocity, right? So another way to think about this problem when we're doing it is just very simple algebra, right? I need to get velocity by itself. So how do I do that? Well, I need to get rid of whatever is on the same side of the equal sign here. So I'm going to end up dividing by my area here, 0 0.196 square feet. What I do to one side, I need to do to the other side, 0 0.196 square feet. So I end up with 0.353 divided by 0.196, and I get to a velocity equal to about 1.8 feet per second. All right, so the math is pretty easy. The 1.96 cancels out here. Divide those two out, I get this 1.8. Now, the units, if you're like, well, how do you get those units, right? If we think about what we're looking at here, we basically have on the flow rate side, we have cubic feet per second. When we divide by square feet, remember that dividing is the same thing as multiplying by the inverse. So I like to kind of write it out differently so we can really see how these units cancel out. This is the same thing as saying cubic feet per second times one over square feet. And so dividing by square feet, we're going to multiply by the inverse, right? One over square feet. Then you can really see that, okay, square feet, I've got two feet here. It's going to cancel out two of them over here, right? So when we multiply across the top units, we see we're left with just feet. We multiply across the bottom, we're left with just seconds. Now, you don't need to know the derivation of these units, but just understand when you're using the QAV formula, this is how you get from with a flow and an area to get to velocity. And the velocity you're gonna to get to is always gonna be in terms of feet per second because your area is gonna be in square feet and your flow is gonna be in, say, feet per second. All right, the last thing I wanna cover here in this video is for those of you that don't really like the algebra, we're like, all right, the whole dividing here, maybe we like the, the pie chart when we use that for, say, doing dosing. You can also use the pie chart for this formula as well. It's a little simpler because there's only two variables basically. So circle, no circle around it, whatever you want to do. The flow rate Q is equal to area times velocity. All right? Similar to how we use the pounds formula. So that you cover up what you don't know and this is how you solve. So normally if we're given area and velocity, we cover up Q, it's what we don't have. We solve by just doing A times V, right? That's exactly what this formula says up here. In the case here, we didn't have V, right? So what we can do is we can cover up velocity here. And what do we have? We have Q divided by area, which is exactly what we did over here. Flow divided by area. If I was doing it the other way around, and let's say I had velocity, I had Q, but did not have area, I would cover up area. And the way to solve for that is Q divided by velocity. Right, so this is just a visual representation of this formula um, that takes out basically one step of algebra, dividing it over here. Instead, you're doing it in this kind of form. So remember, there's all these kinds of little cheats, little graphic ways, if you will, of representing formulas, um, such as the pi when we do the uh, pounds formula for dosing. All right, that's it.